हे यू आर वॉचिंग द मॉड्युलर थर्ड पर्सन शूटर मास्टर क्लास एंड दिस इज द थर्ड व्हिडिओ इन द सिरीज इन दिस व्हिडिओ वी आर गोइंग टू एक्सप्लोर एव्हरी सिंगल ऑप्शन अवेलेबल इन अन एनहॅन्स्ड इनपुट ॲक्शन फर्स्ट लेट्स क्रिएट अ सेपरेट फोल्डर टू ऑर्गनाइज ऑल आवर इनपुट ॲसेट्स इन द कॉन्टेंट ब्राउझर राईट क्लिक अँड क्रिएट अ न्यू फोल्डर नेम इट इनपुट नो गो इन साईड दिस फोल्डर राईट क्लिक अगेन अँड क्रिएट अनदर फोल्डर named actions this is where we will store all our input actions right click in the action folder go to input and input action name it ia move here ia stands for input action this input will handle our character movement whether we are using keyboard keys like wasd or a gamepad's left stick uh, let's open this input action class and take a look at the available options one by one The first field is called action description. As the name suggests, it's just a short note describing what this action does. You can write here handles player movement input. This does not affect the gameplay at all. It's just for your own reference or for teammates working on the project. Trigger when paused. If this is enabled, the input action will still trigger even when the game is paused. This is super useful. when you open a pause menu and you want to allow some input like navigating the menu with arrow keys in those cases tick this box but for this action since it's for movement i don't want the player to move when the game is paused so i will leave it disabled reserve all mappings when this is enabled other mappings will be ignored when this input is active Think of a situation where your player is interacting with an NPC in a dialogue scene. During that interaction, you probably don't want the player to walk around or jump, right? So, when you create an interaction input action for dialogue scene, you might want to enable this option. But again, for movement, we will leave it disabled. Value type is the most important option in this class. It defines what kind of data the input will return. Let's break down the available types one by one and understand when to use which. Boolean. Use this when the action is either on or off. For example, jump action. You are either jumping or not jumping. Same with crouch action. You are either crouching or not crouching. There is no in between. Means in this case there is no need of any float or vector value. Axis 1D. This returns a single float value. which can go positive or negative a great example is a car throttle action either your car can move forward or pull back to reverse both way you are moving in single axis there is no way a car can move in x axis or right left directly means there is only one direction of input so axis 1d fits perfectly for throttle action axis 2d this is what we usually use for character movement like with WASD or the left analog stick if your character can move in all four direction positive negative y axis and positive negative x axis or you can say forward backward left and right then this value type is perfect it gives us both x and y axis in one input axis 3d use this when your character can move on all three axis x y and z for example imagine controlling a flying dragon it can move forward sideways and also up and down in that case axis 3d will be used but since my character is only going to walk on the ground i will set this one to axis 2d for movement triggers and modifiers these two are also very important but we usually don't configure them directly here you will find the same option available inside the input mapping context and it makes more sense to set them there especially when you want to apply them to a specific key bindings so we will leave them blank for now and i will cover them fully when we get to the mapping context in just a moment the rest of the options you see here are rarely used in 99% of the cases now let's set up the input mapping context go back to the input folder right click input and select input mapping context Let's name this IMC player which stands for input mapping context for our player. Open it. At the top click this add mapping button. Now from the drop down 
choose our IA move action that we created earlier. Okay, we have mapped the move action to this context, but it won't work unless we assign some input keys to it. Click the little plus icon next to IA move to add a new key binding. Let's assign the W key first. To do this, just click the keyboard icon and press the W key on your keyboard. Then go ahead and add A, S and D as well. Just like you would expect for W, A, S, D movement. If you open this drop down, you will see triggers and modifiers. Same as we saw in the input action class. So now let's understand this two in detail. In triggers, we have many options. Let's go through them one by one. Tap fires if released quickly, mostly used in mobile games. Released fires only once when the button is released. Pulse. Pulse fires repeatedly while held at a set frequency. Now you might ask, how do you set the frequency for this? Well, if you select this, some other options will appear. Here, you can set the interval or frequency you could say. And rest all the options are actually self-explanatory like trigger on start, trigger limit and affected by time dilation. Pressed fires only once when the button is pressed. Hold and release fires only once when you release the button after holding it for a certain time. Hold fires only after holding the key for a certain amount of time. Down fires every frame while the key is held. A combo requires a combination of other actions to be active like dash plus attack combo, corded action. Corded actions requires another actions to be pressed simultaneously like alt plus some action or maybe shift plus some action. So that's everything for triggers. For IA move, you can either use down trigger or leave it blank because by default, it's already set to down. Now let's understand modifiers. As name suggests, Modifiers are used to modify the value, in this case, input action value that we set in the input action class. For this example, we have set the value type of move action as axis 2D. If you open this drop down, again, it has many options. But in 90% of cases, you will only use these two, negate and swizzle input axis. Let's understand this with a diagram. Earlier we set our input value as axis 2D, means positive negative x and positive negative y. But Unreal by default gives value only in the positive x axis. But what we want is, when we press W, we should move in the positive y axis. When we press S, we should move in the negative y axis. When we press A, we should move in the negative x axis. And when we press D, we stay with the Unreal default positive x-axis. So how do we achieve that? We use Swizzle input axis modifier to change the axis from x to y. For example, we need to use this modifier when we press W so that we move in positive y-axis instead of default positive x-axis. Negate is used to flip the direction from positive to negative. For example, we want the player to move in the negative x-axis when pressing A instead of the default positive x. So we have to use the negate modifier for A key. Now focus on S. We want the player to move in the negative y-axis. So here we need to use both modifiers together. Swizzle input axis to convert x to y and negate to make it negative. We don't need to use any modifier for D because it already moves in the positive X axis by default. I explained rest all the option you see here and put together in a quick guide PDF with updated project file that you can access after every tutorial through my Patreon membership. But that's not all. You will also get beginner C++ notes and Unreal specific C++ notes where I explain how Unreal uses traditional C++ concept. Well, if you are struggling or just getting started with Unreal C++, I highly encourage you to check out this beginner-friendly C++ project. I have created this project specifically for this tutorial series. And throughout the series, 
I will break down every concept you need to understand to eventually build your own third person shooter game from scratch. Projects like this aren't easily available for learners. In fact, there is a serious lack of complete C++ projects or a structured tutorial to really help you get hands-on experience. That's exactly why I started this series. When I was learning, even though I knew traditional C++ concept, still I struggled to understand how Unreal uses C++. So this project is the foundation. It's the bible of this series and it's designed to guide you through learning Unreal C++ the right and professional way. Check this out on my Patreon. The link is in the description and pinned comment. Now back in Unreal, I have already set all the modifiers to the respective keys W, A, S and D. You can see here. Alright, now it's time to implement these input actions inside a blueprint. Let's open up our BP player class. First in the begin play event, we need to tell Unreal which input mapping context we want to use for this character. In our case, it's IMC player. Actually, you can create different mapping context for different pawns. For example, for a car blueprint, you might want to create a new mapping context, maybe IMC car. Okay, so here is what we do. First, search for the get player controller node. Then cast it to your custom player controller. In my case, it's PC main. Now from the cast node, drag out and search for get enhanced input subsystem. Then use the node add mapping context. And from the drop down, select IMC player. Awesome. Now this blueprint is ready to use all the actions mapped inside our IMC player. Now let's handle movement input. Search and place the action event IA move. As you can see, it has five execution pins. So let's understand this one by one. Triggered is what we have set triggers in the mapping context for this action. In this case, it's blank means by default it's down trigger. And as we discussed, down trigger fires every frame, perfect for movement input. Started fires when the input is first activated. Ongoing fires while the input is being held. Cancelled fires if the input is interrupted or cancelled. Completed fires when the input is released. And this input returns a 2D vector, also called axis 2D. Because we set value type as axis 2D inside IA move input action class. Break the input action value to get separate X and Y values. Now to apply this value to character movement, use add movement input node. First set X axis movement. Connect the X value to the scale value. For direction, because we are setting X axis value means right left. So we have to use the get right vector node. Get control rotation and plug to the get right vector. Now for Y axis movement, Use another add movement input node. Connect the y value to scale value. Again, for direction, because we are setting y axis value means forward backward. So we have to use the get forward vector node and plug into direction. Hit play and test. Now your character can move in all directions. Okay, now let's set up mouse input. Go to input actions folder, right click and create a new input action. Name it IA look. Open it and set value type to axis 2D. Since we want to look left, right and up, down. Let's also create a new input action for jumping. Name it IA jump. Open it and set value type to boolean because jumping is just a press release input. Now add this in the mapping context. Back in IMC player, map IA jump to the space bar key. No need to add triggers or modifiers here. Map IA look to mouse XY 2D axis. Again, 
triggers and modifiers can be left blank but often you will see developer add a negate modifier on the y axis only to invert mouse y movement now back to blueprint to bind these actions search and place the action node i a look and break this action value use add controller yaw input and connect the x value to it similarly use add controller pitch input and connect the y value test this out your camera look should now work perfectly now it's time for zump binding search for i a zump action here we don't want to use triggered execution pin because by default it fires every frame while button is held instead use the started pin to trigger zump connect it to the zump node use the completed pin to stop jumping connect it to the stop jumping node now test as you can see zump is working exactly as expected so that's it for the enhanced input system in blueprint our next video will be about understanding the c++ in unreal engine and how to use this enhanced input system in c++ you can get updated project files from my patreon so check my patreon